Praise God. We have been um, looking on Tuesday evenings around the idea and the work of sanctification. There's been a lot that we've looked at, and it's taken me in a lot of different directions. And so I, I just, I really, really just appreciate um, just what God's doing when we look at sanctification and hopefully challenging us in our life to be sanctified. It's a place where many people never get. It's a, it's a place that the, uh, the modern church forgets to teach about is living a sanctified and a holy life. It gets into every area of our life. We talked about how that, um, that, that real worship is presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. We've talked about our lives being different. God makes our personality, but God getting in our personality and cleansing out every area so that we can best serve Him and the purpose that He's designed us to be. And uh, so we talked about how that sanctification comes into our battle. Uh, last week we talked about uh, spiritual battles. We talked about uh, uh, Jonathan, his father Saul, and how Saul did not look through the uh, the lenses of God giving the victory. Amen. God works in the minority to bring the majority. Amen. So we we looked at that and how that even in our lives when we go through spiritual struggles, when we excuse me we have battles, uh, God wants us to look through the lenses of sanctification. And so tonight, I, I, I was challenged by Friday night, and, and, and it just kind of got my wheels turning. Brother uh, 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 Turner preached on uh, the coming of the Lord, and uh, I, 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 he told a joke. It was so funny. He said, how many of you uh, get impatient? Anyone in here ever get impatient? <laughs> and uh, he was talking about, and I just had to laugh because it just it, it reminded me of me. And so I, I, he said, how many ever been at the stop sign and, and, and you yell out, it, it's a stop sign, it's a stop, not stay, get going. <laughs> you ever feel that way? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we get impatient. Sometimes we can be impatient about the coming of the Lord that, 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 that we kind of get off track. And so uh, how does sanctification play in the role of our uh, position as a believer to be ready for the coming of the Lord? That's just where I'm at. You know, how, how, does, how does my life of sanctification help me when I look at Jesus is coming? How many of you believe Jesus is coming? Amen. Amen. I, I, one of my first uh, patients of the day, uh, uh, we got to talking and, and, and something what was said, they get to talk about the Lord. And I said, well, praise God, I believe in you. And so all this started transpiring, and then all this talk turned into what's happening in the hour in which we live. And the patient said to me, I believe Jesus is coming back again very, very soon. I said, I do too. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming. Amen. It's soon and very soon. Amen. And I can't wait to see Him. I can't wait to hear the trumpet sound. I cannot wait to break the law of gravity. I cannot wait to see Him face to face. I cannot wait for that day that, 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 that all of our temptations and trials are going to be over when our faith becomes reality. Amen. And we see Him as He is. Amen. We understand things differently. It's going to be a great day. So how does that play in effect to how we live a sanctified life when we're ready? When we're ready. In the book of Matthew, chapter number 25, I'm going to look at this, and then I'm going to go back and kind of look at it at the beginning. I'm going to kind of tear apart and kind of to try to give it to you as a model of a commentary a little bit, and then we're going to look at it in a, a, a little more detail, and uh, hopefully it will end up being a blessing to you. So keep your Bibles open because I'm going to read and I'm going to kind of give a bit of commentary as I read some things. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten. And let's just stop there. I know I've, I've not said ten what. Does anyone know what the number ten is adjective of in the Bible? You probably think of it as being this number. It really speaks of a completeness, a perfection when you look at that. 
And he says that there was ten virgins. The virgins itself represent those who are belonging to the Lord. And so which took their lamps. Do you know each one of us, each one of us has the light of Christ in us. And so here is this completeness of the church. Here is the completeness of these ten virgins. And the Bible says it took their lamps. It represents the light of Christ that is in all believers. And went forth to meet the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? Christ. And the Bible says, and five of them were what? Wise. Wise. That's a good thing, right? I want to be marked from the ones that are wise. And so when you look, study numerology, you'll see that sometimes folks are going to say uh, five represents a couple things. It can represent grace, and others will say, well, it represents division as well. Um, so, you know, that idea is there uh, uh, you, when you talk to folks and hear what they have to say. And so I still lean to the, to the, to the idea of grace, just so you know. Uh, uh, and the Bible says, and five of them were foolish. Now, the five that were foolish is indicative of modern Christians. I want you to hear that. The five foolish are indicative of modern Christians. We'll talk more about it in a little bit, and, but, but for now, just get that idea in your mind that we're talking about modern Christians. We've been talking about worship. We've been talking about sanctification, uh, what modern Christians are. I mean, man, there is no, there is no distinction in a lot of modern-day Christians. There is no purity. There is no coming out from among them and being separate. There is no real worship that is holy to God in modern Christians. And so indicative of modern Christians. The Bible says, those who were foolish took their lamps and no oil with them. Ooh, wow. I can stop here and just spend the whole evening. I won't, because we have a lot to talk about. So here it is that the five foolish, they take their lamps, but they take no oil with them. What is oil representative of? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's representative uh, of the Spirit of God. Do you realize how important it is for us as believers, as Christians, to operate in the domain of the Spirit of God? Amen. We should be operating in the Spirit of God. When we read the Bible, the Spirit of God should be opening it up to us. The Holy Ghost making it real to us. Amen. Uh, we should be full of the Holy Ghost. And we should build up our, our, our faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. We should be Spirit-led in everything that we do. It should be led of us of the Spirit when, when we make decisions. Uh, but anything in life that we do, we should be led of the Spirit. How we conduct our lives. And so here it is that these five foolish are living out, the, out of the domain of, of having oil. And so that's a, that's a pretty bad domain to live in. They were foolish. They took their lamps and they took the oil with them outside the realm of, of the, the Spirit of God. But the Bible says, But the wise took their oil and their vessels uh, with their lamps. And so here it is that there is a, a, a constant flow of the Holy Ghost in, in their hearts and in their lives, which is maintained every day and every minute, every hour. Do you know what we need to have? We need to maintain in our life the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, amen, that, 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 that every moment of our lives, there is an inflow of His Spirit in us. Doesn't mean that we're not going to go through hard times, disappointing times. Doesn't mean that there aren't going to be days that, you know, you wake up and, 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 and midway through Monday morning you're wishing it was Friday already. Yeah. There will there, 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 be, be days. But, but it doesn't mean that there's not a flow of all, the, the Spirit of God because there should always be that maintain of the Spirit of God in our life that is flowing. And so the Bible says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Let me just stop right here. So our bodies may think, ah, oh, they're slumbering, they're sleeping. There's not really th 
nothing exactly wrong with slumbering and sleeping, per se. They, you know, it wasn't that they were committing this terrible sin because they were slumbering and sleeping. Uh, uh, it doesn't imply that they were doing something terribly wrong. The Bible says, and at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out and meet him. Do you know what the bridegroom cometh is? And go ye out and meet him. Do you know what that is? That's the rapture of the church. Just so you're aware of what's going on. That, that's being ready for the rapture of the church. The Bible says, Then all these virgins, are, uh, virgins are, uh, arose and trimmed their lamps. And you know, you can... You can, you can uh, 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 with, without the oil, you, you, you can still trim, but it's useless. And so uh, uh, that, that's really what it is today when people are religious, but they live outside the realm of the Holy Ghost. They live outside the realm of the Spirit. There can be a lot of religious people, and that can be people who live by the standard that is strict, that's strict. I mean, man, they have it nailed down. But if the Spirit of God ain't in it, amen, uh, they're, they're, you can trim up your lamp all you want, but if you don't have the Holy Ghost, it ain't doing you any good. Amen. And uh, you, know, you, you need the Spirit of God. And so the Bible says, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But guess what? It's too late. You can demand all you want. Demanding it more to begin with. Talk more about that in a little bit. But when the oil is out, it's out. It's too late. Amen. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Lest there, not, there, there be not enough for us and you. But go you rather to them who sell and buy for yourself. Now, we'll talk more about this a little bit later. But, you know, I think the bottom line is this. Is when you look at this, the spiritual truth is this. And I don't really know how to say this any other way. I think that you understand but spiritual energy can't be obtained from anybody else for ourselves. We've got to have it for us. We've got to have the Holy Ghost for us. I mean, you can run to every church service. You can be in church seven days a week. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being at church seven days a week. But if you're relying on everybody else for your spiritual energy and your oil, it can't be that way. And so the Bible says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they who were ready went, went, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. There will come a day where it will be too late. Too late to be saved. Too late to have your, your lamp full of oil. There will come a day. So we've got to be ready. The Bible says, afterwards came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open up to us. You know, they were religious. They were religious. But, but they weren't really saved. They weren't really living the life. You know, people can fall into religion and not be saved. They can one time have been saved, but fall into this uh, category of religion. And not be ready to meet the Lord. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Listen, we've got to live our lives as if Jesus was coming today. That's what the life of sanctification is about. Her story. It was about a uh, movie director, and he was filming a movie. And one day, an Indian came onto the scene, and he said, "He said this uh, uh, to, to, to everyone around right about. He said, tomorrow star, tomorrow star. And lo and behold, the next day there was a terrible hailstorm. It was a few days later." He came and he said, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, 
tomorrow rain. And soon it was rain. And the director said, go find that Indian and tell him I want to hire him. I want him to work for me. I'll pay him. And so he shows up every day and he says, sun here or rain. And the director said, this is the best thing I could have ever, ever invested my money in. It really is working. It's saving me, me thousands of dollars. And all of a sudden, the Indian didn't show up for, for several days and then a week and then two weeks. And the director said, go find that Indian and find out what's going on. Ask him what the weather is going to be tomorrow. I got a great big uh, 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 production tomorrow. I, I, I had this uh, section of the movie that I had to shoot. And they found the Indian and he said, tell me, what's the weather tomorrow? He said, I don't know. My radio broke. <laughs> you see, he looked as if he knew it all. <clears throat> he looked as if he knew it all. The appearances aren't always what they really are on the inside. And here is these ten virgins, and it looks as if they're all ready, but five aren't prepared. So the looks are deceiving. I can look at you, and unless God reveals to me, I don't know your heart. I don't know what's going on. I don't know exactly where you are. The same with you as you look at folks who claim they love God. But the most important thing is, is to know that we've got to be ready. That word foolish that is used for the virgin, uh, for the five virgins, the foolish, the foolish there, uh, it, the, 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 the Greek word is moros. In our language, we get the word moron from that. Or, I don't want to offend anybody by saying it, simply means idiot, foolish. And so, to not be ready to meet the Lord and not to live with the Holy Ghost flowing in us, in our life, led by the Spirit, is just, for lack of a better terminology, is idiotic. When we have the ability to live the way that God wants. And so here it is, that these ten bridesmaids, and, and someone compared it to this, and I'd like to do this tonight, is these ten bridesmaids, were on preparation for the wedding day that was going to take place at the bridegroom's home. And so as, 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 the, as, as the bridegroom and several of, of his close friends were making his way to the home of the bride, uh, 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 that, that, that uh, he would come and get her and the, the wedding would be and, and, and then there would be a consummation. It was this, that, that this, these, this uh, groom and, and, and this party, they would go all the way through the streets and they were celebrating and they were looking forward to uh, this wedding and they would take every back out and they would take every street. And so it was a very long production until they got to, to, to the bride's house. And deliberately they went through the, the most streets so that as many people as possible could see them and they could pass by and they would cheer. And, 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 and so here they are at the home and they're waiting and, 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 and basically they're meandering, oh, waiting for uh, the group to appear. And, and so... Here it is that there's a few things I want to look at. It's only appropriate that God chooses ten women in this parable. It's very unique. You look at the parable before, he has two men. And so then he, he chooses this parable. And he's talking about the church. And he's talking about being ready. He chooses uh, uh, ten women. Now in the Jewish tradition, even if you talk to them nowadays, uh, the Jewish church and when they hold services and, and, and when they have particular... Uh, feast and, and, and holidays, uh, you, you can talk to them and, and traditional, the ones who are very traditional, uh, only allow the, the, there to be made up of something called a minion. And it's ten men. And if they don't have these ten men, the services can't go on. They must have a minion. Now, some liberal churches now have allowed women to, to be part of this, but traditionally, it was ten men. And so, uh, here it is that 
that, 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 that Christ is choosing ten women. And I believe he was already way ahead of his time. Something that is greater than what's happening there. Something that was greater than even is happening in our day. He was being really all-inclusive. And whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, you need to be ready to meet the Lord when the Lord comes. Women are as valuable as men are. That's phenomenal. And all the women said, amen. amen. Right? And so, the second thing is not only, you know, I see him being inclusive of all people that, 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 that he brings in, but the second thing is, is, is that he shows that, that no borrowed resources are, are really, they, they, they can't make it into the kingdom of God. Only the preparation that we have done ourselves will help us make it into the kingdom of God. So that's why it's important to listen to them. People always talk about well, my grandma, she's a praying woman. Probably all of our grandmas had a praying woman because that's the way that we view them oftentimes a lot of things. But grandma's time of life isn't going to get you or I into heaven. And I had good grandmas. It's going to be my preparation and my life of sanctification that is continued. Remember we talked about sanctification and how that word sanct us and we had it shunt to it, that it's a process, a continual going on. And, and so these, these, these ten uh, women, uh, all ten of them had their lamps and had oil, but only five of them had a reserve of oil that they wouldn't have to borrow from anyone else, however long it waited and lasted. How many of you can think of someone that maybe started out serving the Lord, but today they are not. Because the Lord is tearing his, his coming and in his delay. They have not had an adequate flow of the Holy Ghost. So they lost out. Sad for each of us, but a lesson for us. I can't borrow from you, you can't borrow from me. Our lives and the flow of the Holy Ghost has to be our own. And we have to have an added flow of the Spirit of God. And we have to have a reserve of the Spirit of God in our life. So he brings this gender gap in. He, 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 he tells that there, there's a commitment that must be made, uh, a commitment and a, and a discipleship that, that must be for each person that can't be loaned or borrowed. And every, and every believer must participate in the kingdom of God on his or her resources. And then we find that the kingdom of God requires commitment for the long haul. There must be advanced planning. Do you know, if I were to talk to you, let me just say this. I think it's important for all of us, and I don't care who we are, to talk about our life wishes, our wants and our wishes, right? So, Sister Tina, they come to the bank and they want to make sure all their finances are together. That should one die. There's a POA. There's someone else on their account. It's all together. Something happens. I think it's important. My wife knows if I die, I, I personally don't want to be cremated. I want to be, you know, talk about those things where you want to be buried. And, you know, all those things because it's very important that we plan for our life and know what's going on. Agree? If you haven't ever discussed that with your spouse, I really encourage you. You might say, oh, but it's you know, but I'm going to go there. Sure. You may, but you may not. So it's always best to plan a no. I ain't going to talk about those things, right? Amen. I, I gave you that. It wasn't even the most spiritual thing advice, but it's, it's, it's the best advice. But here it is, that there must be advanced planning for our life spiritually. And that's where sanctification comes in. That I am in this for the long haul. I have the Spirit of God and I have an excess of God's Spirit stored up. And I am in this thing. Listen, I've had a lot of folks serving God with me by my side through the years, and they're not now. But I'm not serving God because of anybody else. I'm serving God because this is about me and God. Right? Amen. And, 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 and life changes a lot. Life situations and life stories and life events change a lot. Brother Eli, I'm sure that you never wanted to think about being without your wife. And that wasn't your, your thoughts 30 years ago. 
Amen. You thought about being with her, but, but life events change. But you know what, brother? It's evident in you. You have a supply of the Holy Ghost that is real, that I'm seeing this thing through no matter what. Amen. And that's what a life of sanctification is. I'm seeing this through. Come, 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 come flood, high, high water. Amen. Come whatever forces of hell are against me. I, my mind is made up. I'm prepared. And though the Lord tarry, I, 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 I'm not going to be I just slumbering and, and, and forgetting about His, his return. I, I'm not going to wake up and not have enough oil. Amen. I might have to take a rest now. There's nothing. But I'm going to be ready. And so it's not of a, 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 a knowing that, that I'm, I'm, I'm committed to this for the long haul. I, I've made advanced planning that's necessary. I have reserves on hand. Amen. I, I know that I'm not going to be an, uh, 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 just uh, instantaneously what I, what I should be. But, but, but there's, there's this maturity that I'm growing in in the kingdom of God. And I'm going to continue to grow until He comes. And so that's what these virgins represent. And so these five wise women, they knew that it might be all night long and they, they, they came prepared accordingly whenever it comes. And, 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 and so uh, the, the failure to be ready, uh, uh, poor judgments, inadequacies, uh, they're, they're, they're not going to be enough when Christ comes. We've got to make the best judgments. We've got to be adequate. There are some folks, and I've done this and sometimes before in school, you know, there are sometimes I'm not really engaged in it. I don't care about getting the highest grade. I just went through this thing. And there are other times I want to do the best, I want to do the top. But there has been times in my life, Sister I've just had to do it, and so I'm getting through it, and I don't care about all other people. I just need to make it through another grade. They don't care if I make 100, or they don't care if I make 80. And so I'm getting through it. But it can't It can't be enough just to make it through. But we have to make sure there's an adequate supply that when He comes, we are ready. Amen. And that's what the life of sanctification is about. And so... Here it is that we find that 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 that, that all of a sudden they go out and they demand of a mirror, give me oil. Do you know what? Demanding and the things of God will never get you where you want to be. You cannot demand them. Think about this. There was a, a, a rich man and Lazarus. You know that story? And so they both died. And, and, and so here it was Lazarus, that poor beggar. He was carried away into Abraham's bosom. But, but the rich man, he is, he, he, he's, he's in hell. And he lifted up his eyes. And he said, you send that Lazarus to give me water. You demanded all your life, rich man. But your demand's not working this time. Tell them to go tell my brothers. But your demands aren't working this time. It can't be. You see, we can't demand, but we have to have an adequate supply. You hear me tonight? We can't demand of somebody else. We've got to be ready in this thing. Should the Lord come tonight or should the Lord come in 10, 20, 30 years? Amen. We've got to be ready. Amen. And we've got to have an adequate supply. That's why it's so important to live a sanctified life. I don't live a life sanctified that I want your approval or anyone else's approval. I want God's approval on my life. Amen. When my life's work is finished, Amen. When the Lord comes back, I want Him to find me that my lamps are trimmed and they are trimmed for a purpose because I'm stoking that, 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 that wick with the Holy Ghost and I am burning. I'm shining the light of Jesus Christ because I'm ready for His return. Amen. Amen. We've got to be ready, folks. We've got to be ready. It's so important. And so the kingdom of God, amen, Jesus, he, he's sharing, amen, that he is coming, amen, he is coming, the Messiah, the Lamb of God is coming, and only he knows who is coming uh, to the banquet, and, and, and he knows who is deliberately waiting on, on, on his arrival, and he knows what's going to, to happen next, amen, and so uh, uh, we've just got to be ready. 
See, we've got to have our eyes on you. Young women in the Middle East, from what I understand, and what I, 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 as I studied this, the custom of the culture was that young women wouldn't be caught out in the dark without a light. Because if they were out without a lamp, it was just unthinkable. What might they be doing in the dark and with whom? So to avoid all that, these young ladies always have a lamp in the dark. Don't let your lamp go out. Don't let the supply run low. Make sure the wicks are trimmed. Even when the parade is slowly moving throughout the village and it's taking longer than what we could have ever projected or think. The difference among the half that made it is they brought an extra flask. In your life of sanctification, do you have the extra flask? Do you? I'm not being cold or hard tonight by asking that. I'm saying that with passion and challenge you. Do you have the extra flask? We're going to need it. Are you prepared to meet the bridegroom? Do you have the extra flask? To the horror of the bridegroom, five was ready and five were not. Five had their little clay flask and they were replenishing their light lamps while five foolish were demanding all of other people. They said, we don't have enough for you. We only have enough for us. Go and buy more. And so, really, no matter when, there was probably always someone in the village that could give them more. And so when they went and they got it, and they came back, they found the door shut. Now, I want you to imagine this. If Jesus is telling this parable in the story, folks are sitting on the edge of their seat in suspense. I'm not saying it could have been or they were, but it is possible that as they're sitting there, they're sitting there the door is closed. I bet Jesus is going to tell us. I bet he's going to tell us, open the door a little bit more, straight for them in. super duper great. You know what? It's not me you have to impress. It's not anybody else you have to impress. It has to be that when the Lord tarries His coming, that He comes back and He finds that you had an extra flask and you are filling up and you are trimming and your light is burning. Amen. That's all that really matters. It's not about looking good. Amen. We live in a society where everybody wants to worship and it looks so good to worship, but their heart is so far from God. And folks want to say, but I love Jesus. If you love Jesus, then take up your cross and follow after Him. Learn to crucify yourself. If you love Jesus, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you love Jesus, Jesus, then live a sanctified life. That's what the message of Jesus' parable is saying. You've got to be ready because the bridegroom's coming. He knows the day. He knows the hour. And so, in the Middle East, the word no. In this culture, from what I understand, means no negotiating. No, the door is shut. 
say when Christ shuts the door. There's no negotiating after that. The door is shut. The door is shut. And then the host of the banquet is committed to those who are ready. In the foolish versions, they represent unfaithful, unfaithful disciples that eternally die. challenge of sanctification is be faithful. Unfaithfulness will not be the way in the kingdom of God. I'm not at all trying to be harsh by what I'm saying tonight. I'm trying to say it's so stirring for each of us that we've got to be faithful to the end. I know that had the same opportunity as the wise. They could have brought an extra flask when they came. They could have been prepared that no matter how long it took for the bridegroom to get there, that they would be waiting and they would be prepared. But they were flippant. They did not prepare. A life of sanctification means I'm prepared for the coming. No matter how I will work faithfully to my comers. I'm done. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add or say tonight?